بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين ورحمة الله للعالمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All the praise and all the glory is due to Allah and I bear witness that there is no God worthy of being worshipped but Allah and Muhammad is his last prophet and messenger May the blessings and peace of Allah be upon our prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his family, his companions, and those who followed his path up to the day of a judgment. My dear respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome back to a new pearl of wisdom that the Prophet ﷺ has given to his Sahaba. In today's statement, it is basically an advice that the Prophet ﷺ delivered to Ubadat ibn al Samit. And Umadat, Ubadat ibn Samit was one of the young Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ta'ala alayhim and he was one of the people who conducted negotiations with Al-Muqawqis, the uh, king of Egypt. And he was a lofty man. Uh, Al-Muqawqis was actually afraid of talking to him. But once he has been informed that he is a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu and all the people could not actually make any negotiation with that person, with that ruler, except the Sahabi of the Prophet ﷺ, how they respected him. Ubadat ibn Samit was very simple in his clothes and in his appearance. And this scenery was implanted in the heart and in the minds of the people surrounding that ruler. And it caused them actually to accept Islam later. Ubadat ibn Samit witnessed the Prophet ﷺ and received some ahadith from him. One of those ahadith was basically the hadith under discussion in which the Prophet ﷺ said, If you guarantee six things of yourselves, I'm going to guarantee for you the Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ is talking about six items. If a person makes sure that he is he fulfills their own rights and he is doing them properly, so he guarantees for him the the garden of Jannah, the garden of paradise, or admits him to the Jannah by the will of Allah. He said, "Usduku idha haddastum, usduku idha haddastum." Tell the truth when you talk. Wa awfu idha ahadtum, and fulfill your promise when you give a word. وَأَدُّوا إِذَا تَمَنْتُوا إِذَا تُمِنْتُمْ And fulfill your trusts. وَحْفَظُوا فُرُوجَكُمْ And protect your private parts. وَغُضُّوا أَبْصَارَكُمْ And lower your gaze. وَكُفُّوا أَيْدِيَكُمْ And control your hands from beating or abusing or harming anybody. So the Prophet ﷺ in brief has given us six things and you can test yourself by uh, checking those six items and the Prophet ﷺ is talking about major uh, major things they are major items they are uh, basic essentials in the life of a Muslim number one telling the truth uh, keeping promises uh, keeping uh, trusts uh, protecting private parts lowering the gaze and not oppressing others which has been referred in this hadith by controlling our hands kufu aidiyakum stop your hand from beating abusing from hitting or harming anybody first of all the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said usduku idha haddastum a believer is all, always telling the truth and a sidq or the truth, being truthfulness, has many aspects. It's not only restricted, my brothers and sisters, to just telling the truth or not telling a lie. It extends to many aspects. On the top of them, that when a Muslim speaks, he should actually speak the truth. 
He never spreads rumors. He never spreads lies. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, كَفَى بِالْمَرْءِ كَذِبًا أَنْ يُحَدِّثَ بِمَا سَمِعَ It is sufficient to claim that a person is a liar if he speaks out of anything that he hears without verification. Subhanallah, nowadays we receive a lie through the internet, through the social media, and then it is widespread like fire. So everybody hears about it. We receive a statement and immediately we forward it through emails, through posts on Facebook, on WhatsApp, without even giving any uh, attention to whether this statement is true or false. It is an old news, it's, 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 it's uh, uh, old news or it's new, it happened, it didn't happen. So a person it just spreads it. And it comes as the Prophet ﷺ talked about the swindlers and about the fortune tellers of the days of Jahiliyyah. They catch up uh, a statement and then they decorate it and they add more statements which are all falsehood and they reach the heavens. So Allah may reach actually the heavens. The Prophet ﷺ said, وَإِنَّ الْعَبْدَ لَيَتَكَلَّمُ بِالْكَلِمَةِ مِنْ سَخَطِ اللَّهِ لَا يُلْقِي لَهَا بَالًا يَهْوَى بِهَا فِي جَهَنَّمِ A person may just speak a word without paying any attention to its consequences or its uh, effects. And then it may cause him to be dragged in the hellfire for 70 years. And such is the case of a person who speaks a word out of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu commanded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Surah Al-Hujurat to verify Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu in jaakum fasikum binaba in fatabayyanu Whenever a transgressor or sinful brings up a news, a piece of a news, you have to verify whether it is true or false. We should not actually speak out of everything that we hear without due verification. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said إِنَّ الصِّدْقَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْبِرِّ Truthfulness leads to righteousness. وَإِنَّ الْبِرَّ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ And righteousness guides to the garden of paradise or to the jannah. وَلَا يَزَالُ الْعَبْدُ يَصْدُقُ وَيَتَحَرَّ الصِّدْقَ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ صِدِّقَ And a person continues telling the truth, verifying the news, making sure of what he says, until he is resurrected among the truthful, the, 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 the trustworthy and the Siddiqeen on the day of a judgment. And the opposite is for those who actually try to tell falsehood, speak falsehood and speak lies all the time. If this is the first, the first point that a person should actually pay attention to, which is protecting his tongue. As it has been explained in another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said to another Sahabi, Guarantee for me what is between your jaws and what is between your thighs. The Prophet ﷺ is meaning here the tongue and the private parts. And I'm going to guarantee for you the Jannah. The second item that the Prophet ﷺ has mentioned in this hadith is to fulfill our promises or to keep our promises. Keeping a promise, my brothers and sisters, is not only restricted to just when you give somebody an appointment or you give him a, a, a time to meet or to sit together that you fulfill. Yes, this is one of the examples. But fulfilling a promises actually extends to fulfilling your contracts. When you have a contract of sale or you purchase something, when you uh, promise somebody that you, uh, you, you, you buy something from him or you lease something from him, this is a contract. And the best type of contract that a person should actually keep his word to is marriage. The Prophet ﷺ said, The most worthy, the most worthy, Contracts to fulfill are the, the are the contracts of marriage. 
So the Prophet ﷺ emphasized the fulfillment of promises and conditions which are included in the contracts of marriage, like for example, payment of dowry, good treatment of the, of the wife, good treatment of the husband, following the orders and following the discipline of the family and building it according to the Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. This is a part of keeping your promises. When you promise somebody of doing something or of having something, a person should actually do his best and at, at his utmost to fulfill his word and to be uh, to do what he promised. This is one of the signs of a believer. So the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as he uh, in another hadith, he mentioned the three signs of a hypocrite, and one of them is when he is actually giving a word, he breaks his promise. He always break his promise, and this is a very common practice among many Muslims my brothers and sisters subhanallah many people they don't fulfill their promises allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the quran ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu awfu bil uqud o you who believe fulfill all the obligations and the contracts so we as muslims have even binding contracts and those binding contracts are obligatory to fulfill and there is no way of cancelling those contracts like the contract of sale the contract of uh, of uh, pawn the uh, contract of lease all of those contracts have to be respected and on the top of them as i mentioned the contract of marriage between a man in and uh, and a between a husband and a wife so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala respected those contracts and they are a part of the system that the Muslim has to keep his word. My brothers and sisters, it is so important before giving a word or giving a promise or setting up a condition that you make sure that you are going to fulfill it. Uh, the signs of the hypocrites as we mentioned is that a person who doesn't keep his word and the scholar said that a person who promises and at the time when he promised, he doesn't like to fulfill his word or to do what he promised. So this is called a hypocrite. He is a munafiq or it is an act of hypocrisy as the Prophet wasallam said and mentioned. We as Muslims uh, uh, should keep our words and our promises. So these are some of the uh, uh, these are the three elements that the prophet or two elements that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in his hadith to ubadat ibn samit telling the truth and keeping our promises we continue explaining the rest of the four items that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked us to guarantee to so that he guarantees for us jannah inshallah after having a short break assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to Pearls of Wisdom. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as I mentioned to you, has set up the terms of the contract of sale. This contract of sale between Muslims and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to get the Jannah for believing in Allah. So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned to us six items. If a person fulfills, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself guarantees that that person will be definitely insha'Allah be admitted to the Jannah. The third item is The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said and fulfill all your trusts or take care of what you have trusted you what you have been trusted with we have a lot of trusts in our life we have a lot of responsibilities which are stipulated and we will be questioned uh, about them on the day of a judgment on the top of them the responsibility towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
Allah mentioned that in the Quran. Inna aradna al-amanata ala samawati wal ard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has offered this amana or this trust of responsibility for the heavens and the earth and, and Jibal and the mountains. And they refused actually to take, uh, to be in charge of this responsibility. But insan, the human uh, or man took uh, charge of this responsibility. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about him in the Quran. إِنَّهُ كَانَ ظَلُومًا جَهُولًا he, ha- he is full of ignorance and he is full of injustice or uh, full of zulm. So h- how a person actually removes this in- ignorance and this zulm? He can uh, remove ignorance by a greater value or a greater amount of revelation that he studies and learns. And this is a, uh, if he studies Sharia, if he studies Islam, if he acquires knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about his sharia, so he removes a greater part of his ignorance. And how does he remove uh, uh, the uh, zulm or injustices? Basically by developing the state of taqwa or piety or fear from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have responsibilities towards our children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question us about our children. The Messenger وسلم, said in the authentic hadith, لن تزو, uh, the Prophet وسلم, says, كلكم راع وكلكم مسؤول عن رعيته. Everyone is responsible and he is liable to be questioned about his responsibility. الإمام راع ومسؤول عن رعيته. A leader or a ruler is responsible and he is going to be questioned about his responsibility. والرجل راع في أهل بيته ومسؤول عن رعيته and man is responsible for his family, for his children, for his wife and a woman is responsible in her family and a servant is responsible for the property of his master or the property of his uh, uh, manager so everybody has a responsibility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will be questioned about the responsibility in front of Allah on your children. How did you, have you educated them? Have you enjoying good and forbidding evil? You have disciplined them. You have chosen them the ideal mother or the mother who actually, who actually bring them according to Islam, according to the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the love of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not. So everybody is going to be questioned about those responsibilities. Allah said in the Quran, وَقِفُوهُمْ إِنَّهُمْ مَسْؤُولُونَ Let them stand up and stop on the day of resurrection because they are being questioned about their responsibilities. So everybody who has anything that he is entrusted with will be actually held accountable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that responsibility and on that trust. And as I mentioned to you, this trust includes your acts of worship, includes the people who under your authority, includes your property and your wealth, including the health that Allah has given you, and including the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has embedded you with. The fourth advice that the Prophet has given is to protect our private parts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the believers on the day of judgment by saying وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ Those who protect their private parts except for their wives and for those whom the right hands possess. So حفظ الفرج or protecting uh, one's private parts means that a person does not commit adultery or fornication. And this is one of the basic and essential elements in the Islamic Sharia to protect the immunity and to protect the prosperity and the discipline of the community and the Muslim nation as a whole. When a person, the only outlet and the only way, the only halal way of uh, uh, having or fulfilling one's desire is basically to get married. There is no uh, dating in Islam. As it, is, uh, uh, as it is widespread in many cultures. Why? Because Islam 
uh, actually put an end to the chaos that the people of Jahiliyyah had. When they have illegitimate children, they don't have any responsibilities about their families and about their children. So the widespread, and now we see that in the West, how the illegitimate children endanger the uh, social structure and the social fabric of the whole society and the community. Marriage means that the, this is a Solomon contract and tie between two persons to have full responsibility about each other and to have full responsibility about the family. So they have the right, this family has the right of maintenance, the right of provisions, and the right of financial support. And it's also, it's a full responsibility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and before the community. This is basically because Islam uh, uh, prohibited adultery, fornication, uh, chaos in uh, uh, paternity, in the case of paternity and of, uh, of, of ansab or uh, lineage. And this is one of the essential objectives of the Islamic Sharia. Ah. The protection against fornication and adultery, my brothers and sisters, requires that a person does not actually draw closer to anything that drags a person into the steps of fornication and adultery. As the Prophet, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only prohibited zina or fornication, but he prohibited all the avenues and ways which lead to the zina. Allah said in the Quran, وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا الزِّنَا إِنَّهُ كَانَ فَاحِشَةً وَسَاءَ سَبِيلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, do not draw yourselves closer to adultery and fornication by avoiding all means possible that leads to fornication and adultery. Because it is a wrong path and eternally leads to evil and destruction. So the consequences of adultery and fornication is not actually related to one, to the individual, but it's actually extended to have a lot of atrocities in the society and the community. Finally, the Prophet said, وَغُضُّ أَبْصَارَكُمْ And lower your, lower your gaze. Lower your gazes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasized that in Surah An-Nur. And he said, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ قُلِّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ وَيَحْفَظُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ Tell the believing or command the believing men to lower their gaze and to protect their private parts. So the Prophet emphasize the importance of lowering gaze. There is a relationship between lowering gaze and protecting private parts. Basically, because uh, lowering the gaze is one of the means of protecting a person against adultery and fornication. Because looking aimlessly and looking to uh, foreigners, men to m women and women to men without any restrictions, without with having lusts and desires, it is spreads sexual arousal and it's mingling together and mixing which actually causes the and, and makes uh, the, the, the uh, uh, and causes adultery and fornication so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasized the importance of lowering gaze and linked it actually to the protection of private parts against adultery and fornication my brothers and sisters nowadays subhanallah we release our eyes we release our desires when you thumb through the internet, you thumb through websites, when you thumb through YouTubes, uh, unfortunately, we look at nudity. Subhanallah. We look at things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with. A lot of displeasures, a lot of sins that come at the beginning accidentally and afterwards a person becomes trained and practiced to, to do that frequently. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds him accountable according to the authentic hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib that the first accidental look is not held, a person is not held accountable for. Is a person is not held accountable for the first look when a person or the first glance when a person looks at the opposite uh, sex or the opposite side and he sees a woman or he sees something haram so he is not held accountable about it but afterwards if he continues and insists actually of seeing and observing and following and participating, so he is involved in the sin, which is one of the major sins. 
and it actually extinguishes the fear from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, extinguishes the light in the heart of a believer when a person releases his gazes here and there. And finally, the Prophet sallallahu said about the sixth item, which is kuffu aydiyakum. And the kuffu aydiyakum means that you have to control your hand. This hand can be used in the proper way of saying la ilaha illallah, of helping the poor, of giving assistance to those who are in need for help, for working, to be, uh, to, to be a labor, to work, for uh, fulfilling one's uh, needs and to have responsibility over the family. So this hand may also be used for making a physical abuse, for oppressing others, for harming people, for uh, uh, transgression, for killing. So the Prophet ﷺ told us this is very dangerous that you use your power and your strength in the proper way. And the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directed and guided you to do. So briefly, my brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ has given us six golden items in this hadith of Ubadat ibn al-Samit. And check yourself regarding those six items. If you guarantee those things, you would actually guarantee the Jannah. Number one, guarantee of yourself that you tell the truth. You Number two, that you fulfill your promises and keep your words, that you fulfill your trusts. Number four is to protect your private parts and to lower your gaze and finally to control your hands and your power or strength. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who are rightly guided to follow the instructions and the guidance of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh